45 seconds of logos, again. Awesome! Did Disney buy DC as well? Is it Superman? Even though this movie is great, like a solid A, that doesn't change the fact that it's the third best Toy Story film. Super short fluff sequel finds time for over three goddamn minutes of imaginary Buzz Lightyear video game adventure bullshit. Seriously, Buzz breathes like a discount Darth Vader, and he's white too? I know Gary Reinstrom is a big part of the sound of this movie, but damn, dude, how many times are you gonna go to that Star Wars well? Hey, this will be the first year I miss cowboy camp, all because of my stupid hat! Woody has lost his hat. Has anyone checked with that fing prankster shark? The boy who wrote that would take you to camp with or without your hat. Does he have any reason to think he can't go to camp without the hat? Because if not, Woody needs a psychiatrist more than he needs Andy. Hey, yeah. Where'd you find it? Well, that's the bad news. <laughs> So wait, did Slink steal the hat back from the dog and then manage to outrun said dog? Because, you know, Slink is a slinky with very poor motor skills, right? <gasps> okay, have a good weekend. I see the humans in this house continue to give the toys extremely helpful warnings before anyone walks into a room and has their world change forever. Five minutes. Hmm. It would take 15 minutes bare minimum to set up all these army men. That's probably the joke they're making, but f it. Five minutes is five minutes. <laughs> Somehow this hasn't happened before now. Also, a small tear will somehow mean Andy can't take this toy he's been taking to cowboy camp for years to cowboy camp. Candyland, Mousetrap, Twister, Guess Who, Life? Where's the fucking shoots and ladders, assholes? Andy's mom has had some work done, no? She looks nothing like she did in the last movie is what I'm saying. You know, I feel like Andy continued his love of Woody simply because the first movie demanded a happy ending. This kid would have moved on from Woody two weeks after they moved into the new house, with that. Woody drops his dead arm, but then also has a perfect view of Andy getting into the go- Ah, Super Nintendo! Let's play some Bomberman right f***ing now! You know, if you're gonna make a joke about cousin AJ, Joe, Jim Bob writing a book about the real, real big trucks, you might want to make that thing 300 pages lighter. You know what I mean, Vern? Nearly every board game in this stack is also a movie with the same name. That Guess Who movie really went off the rails when it came to adapting the source material. I sinned a whole bunch of stuff and the whole thing turned out to be a dream sequence. But the movie is a dickhead for spending its first 12 minutes on video game footage and dream sequences. Also, even toys have disturbing dream sequences. <laughs> now, what if this happened while Andy was in the room? Nah, she just told him that to calm him down and then put me on the shelf. Yeah, but you guys are living toys, right? Why have you never made your presence known since you were put on the shelf? Does the shelf have some sort of magical properties we aren't aware of? No one could hear me. Yeah, your squeaker is broken, but not your voice. Yard sale! All the toys freak out about a yard sale sign the mom is hammering into the front lawn, but I'm much more concerned about a mother who opens a yard sale on her property without even so much as a hint about which toys her son is willing to part with. And while I'm at it, how convenient is it that Andy's not home right now? Okay, boy, to the yard sale! Yeah! What? That dog understands English? Or you already taught at the command for to the yard sale? I mean, I can suspend my disbelief with the best of them, but you're stretching it here, man. These toys move in the presence of humans so damn often it's a wonder they ever even try to pretend they're non-animated toys. Back to Andy's room. After all that trouble hiding, Woody will now ride the back of a dog in full view of anyone who cares to look up. Super well-trained toy-friendly dog is utterly clueless when his best toy friend falls off in the front yard. Because the script called for conflict. Perhaps the least believable thing about any of the Toy Story movies is that Al from Al's Toy Barn would be lurking at this exact yard sale at this exact temporary moment when Woody finds himself trapped. And that Woody falling on a table would accidentally trigger his voice prompt, which is the only reason Al even found out he was here. I mean, goddamn. Oh, he's stealing Woody. Al, who is a known local celebrity featured in tons of commercials, thinks he can steal Woody no problem, right after being a pushy bastard about buying it. And don't give me that he dresses like a chicken stuff either, because his face is clearly visible. Buzz's hand somehow punches this trunk open, which I'd normally sin, but I'm gonna take the sin back for all the detail the animators put in to show scratches all around its keyhole. A nice touch indeed. He didn't have a beard like that. Did you guys see this dude or not? How does a ZZ Top beard ever become part of the equation? The kidnapper was bigger than that. Oh, picky, picky, picky. Just... Slink would be amazing at cinema sins, but Ham would be amazing at being our critics. I can't believe I have to drive all the way to work on a Saturday. All the way to work! This asshole dresses in his chicken costume before driving to the commercial shoot. If Al comes bursting back into the room right now, these living toys are all busted as hell. There's no way they can all get back into place in time. Not to mention how many styrofoam peanuts they've strewn around the room at this point. But toys play dead when humans are around thing really loses its luster when you just script the humans out of the way whenever you need it. Say hello to the prospector! Do you get the sense that Joan Cusack signed up for this because she thought it was the sequel to Toys? Oh wait, nobody would do that. Stupid question. Why the prodigal son has returned. You know he's evil because the voice is Sideshow Bob. <laughs> what the hell? Why does Collector Owl Dude have priceless Woody magazines strewn across the floor? Answer, he doesn't. He just made a cool shot, so they did it. Every single one of these tapes is episodes four through six. Nothing, Prospector. I reckon we ought to get out of here. 
What? They've been sitting here dumbfounded watching TV for hours. And even if Al somehow ended up doing a hundred takes on his chicken soup commercial across the street, there's no way these f***ers knew that was happening. So they should be caught dead to rights as living toys by all measure of logic and sanity. They are, at the very least, some of the stupidest toys to ever forget to pretend not to be alive. Now it's on to the museum! Museum? <laughs> and now you learn the movie set this whole record player thing up just for a cheap record scratch gag at the sound of something shocking. Al's coming! <gasps> Go! Oh, go on, oh. Jesse! Yes, go! And somehow clean up all those styrofoam peanuts on the floor, and put away the videotapes, and turn off the TV, and... Jesus, this is hopeless, isn't it? We have a friend in need. And Unnecessary patriotism. And that concludes our broadcast day. What? Bull TV channels haven't been signing off this way since decades before this fucking movie takes place. But whatever makes the parental nostalgia bell go ring-a-ding-ding, -ding, right? I see that cheese all over his fingers, but how'd it get there? This bowl is completely full. He fell asleep before he had time to eat any of it. How blind is Woody to have not seen any of this prior to stepping on the first cheese puff? <gasps> Bullseye! Just like in real life, horses are so worried about being helpful they don't realize how much noise they're making. Wait. Well, Lucky Bullseye decided to wake up and join Woody then, because I don't think he could have climbed the couch without it. Let's just say Al wakes up now, by chance. Is there some kind of toy court where Woody would face charges of failing to pretend to not be alive? Bullseye ignores hundreds of actual cheese puffs in order to lick the dust off the fingers of a dude I'm pretty sure didn't even eat any himself. <laughs> yep, toys can smell. Who knew? No, Officer, I swear! Somehow Pixar thought this would be hilarious dialogue for a suddenly awoken creepy guy to say. No idea where they were going with that, but it's creepy as hell. Super serious toy collector dude pays no heed to his cheesy fingers while picking up a priceless toy. What? You think I did that? Woody accuses Jesse of turning on the TV when he tried to take back his arm, but somehow she didn't see Stinky Pete do it. Why are there spikes on this road when there's no boom barrier blocking it? Bob! Massive miracle. Also, apparently no one notices these cones moving by themselves. Road that was pretty much abandoned a minute ago will decide to be the hardest level of Frogger ever so the heroes have a challenge. Also, I'm pretty sure these toys caused a 14 car accident where many, many people were killed. We just didn't see it because the movie is rated G. This pipe fell off a truck that had to haul all sorts of momentum to stop, and yet it rolls like a gang of nerdy guys are pushing it uphill. Toy Fixer Dude turns out to be the old man from the Pixar chest short, which I suppose thrills and delights me to no end, right? <sighs> You can't rush art. You hear that, Marvel? Why is the automatic door open and working, but the closed sign is still in the window? Someone didn't do their job all the way. These toys all just saw a human worker come in here, but now they're spreading out just openly wandering around shouting Woody, as though no humans could be nearby. While I admit it would be weird to see an aisle full of other yous, Buzz already experienced the whole I'm not unique and I'm a toy thing last movie. Overstock. This raises an interesting philosophical question, though. At what point do toys in this universe become self-aware? You know, they make it so you can't defeat Zerg unless you buy this book. It's extortion, that's what it is. Wait until you get to the era of DLC and in-game purchases, T-Rex. You got it good right now, trust me. This thing has working gas and brake pedals. Get the f*** out of here, movie. These guys are in a car driving around a toy store where there are no helpful warnings from Andy's mom that someone's about to come into the room. Movie thinks that if it swaps in a second buzz in place of Woody, then I'll overlook the fact that it's literally repeating an entire scene from the first movie. You know how the rest of this goes at this point, right? Movie is wrong. These Barbies know how to party. One question though, why didn't they let any of the Ken dolls join the bash? They'd be in the same aisle, right? Also, no other toy sold in this store is stupid enough to be awake at this point, but all the Barbie stuff is having a pool party right now? What do toys do in the age of security cameras, by the way? I feel sad for this Barbie because she is cooking a steak that will never get cooked enough. Back in 1995, short-sighted retailers did not order enough dolls to meet demand. Disney complaining about not getting enough money. Also, I guess they've more than made up for it by overbuying on the next go-around. See how that works? Tiny Tim can still get his operation after all. No, if this guy was the true collector he's been made out to be, he'd know better than to put his greasy fingers all over the priceless toy just to take an obscene number of posed photos in order to then sell said priceless toy. Oils, dust, potential damage, this guy is ignoring all the obsessive collector basics. It's like printing my own money. What serious toy collector or serious eBay seller would take and use Polaroids of the merchandise? Sure, it looks better for this shot to have him holding physical pics, but it's dumb as hell. On my way to the office to fax them to you! And he's going to fax them to the buyer! Take too many pictures, use Polaroid instant film, and then fax results! This guy has never sold a high-value item in his life. And somebody loved me. Damn, this scene's going to appeal to my soft side and make me remove sins, isn't it? Every one of these transitions suggests this girl outgrew her love of horses for stuff like makeup and music. But what's going to outgrow her love of being a stereotype? Huh. This suggests that Emily grew up during the 60s and 70s, what with the record player and the posters. But she has a poster for a concert at Pixar Studio for the Lemurs on November 25th, 1999, the day after the release of this movie. 
Something's fishy about that. I don't know what. Man, this donation center is out in the middle of f***ing nowhere. Buzz just managed to escape at the perfect time and sees Rex's tail hanging out of this bag so he knows where to go next. Buzz somehow knew these particular toys in this order would lead to him flying toward the door. Zerg toy just happened to be mixed in with the bargain bin. I guess because no one likes to buy the Buzz Lightyear villain? But no one wants to buy Buzz Lightyear either, according to the shelves in this place. Imposter Buzz is able to pull this vent out. You know, I think that buzz out went to his head. These idiots still haven't figured out they've got the wrong buzz. Elevator ex machina. Actually, Buzz then decides not to use the elevator, but then, yeah, elevator ex machina. Hello, that looks like a thing I can't see since my eyes are covered. Wait a minute, are you saying Mr. Potato Head's eye works even when it's not attached to him? This guy was blind in the last movie when they knocked out his eyes, so you're filthy cheaters, Pixar. You're a child's plaything. You are a toy! Symmetry. You got a friend in me. Retro version of Randy Newman's song from the first movie gives Woody the idea he needs to advance the plot. I thought the guy did a really professional job fixing Woody, but apparently he can just scrape the paint off with a couple of swipes. Right, no one heard or saw him exit the box and walk over here and do this. Totally. Also, Stinky Pete tightens the screws on this vent, the only method Andy had for escape, but didn't do this any time earlier when he knew everyone was asleep. Buzz and gang react to Zerg before Zerg is even visible. Zerg took his sweet ass time finding Buzz, didn't he? Although maybe he had complications involving getting to this floor, but I'm still sending it because of this perfect timing. This should mean Mr. Potato Head lost all his body parts to the elevator shaft, but no, nope, it doesn't. You killed my father! No, Buzz. I am your father. No! Parody note. Also, this line of toys is a serious ripoff of Star Wars, from the story to their sound effects. I know this is just another Newman, Dennis Nedry character Wayne Knight is playing here, and he's evil and dumb, but can he seriously not hear the slinky behind him? I finally defeated Zerg! Rex thinks pushing the toy Zerg off an elevator is the same as defeating him in the video game. And as a guy who actually killed a number of mother brains in real life, I can tell you that my inability to beat them in video games left my frustration intact. Mr. Potato Hat somehow stomps these heavy double doors from closing, which is some bullshit. Pizza, anyone? Pizza truck from the first movie, Ex Machina. Strangers from the outside. I didn't realize until re-watching this how much lip service this movie pays to the first one. I guess I should be glad that these toys are somehow finding a way to drive this car, but this really goes against all the rules and general stuff they needed to worry about in the first movie. And plus, it's toys driving a car somehow. Coordination between all these idiot toys on their first time driving makes me kind of angry. Drive angry. Oh, there he is. How did Al park his car and get to check in so fast? How are Buzz's feet protruding through this pet carrier's floor in order to propel it along the carpet? Ooh, a puppy. Uh, bark, 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 bark. Uh, bark, uh, bark, bark. This works. It's not a Pixar movie unless there's a giant factory or maze of conveyor belts to navigate. Pixar goes for that classic Butte joke, which is something Beavis and Butthead Do America did two years earlier, and everyone did whenever Butte, Montana was founded. It's amazing what transpires to make Woody look exactly the same when he finally gets back into the arms of Andy. Toy Story 2 steals the flashing camera weapon from Rear Window and that Itchy and Scratchy Land episode of The Simpsons. Toy Horse with no real hooves will catch up to this gas-powered vehicle, American Airlines. Wow, that Toy Horse was running at the same speed as an about-to-take-off jumbo jet. I'm not even mad, that's amazing. These toys put great faith in the fact that Andy's mom won't find it weird when Andy mentions this to her. Oh wow, new toys! Yeah, a horsey and a girly doll. What's not to love when you like exclusively dude toys and only use Bo Peep when you need a female for Woody to save? Welcome to Al's Toy Barn. It's good that Al approved an ad where he was so sad we could see the results of his comeuppance. Mr. Shark looked in the toy box and found me an extra squeaker. Which means there's another toy with its squeaker completely ripped out. Either that or this toy comes with a spare squeaker of some sort, which I'm not buying for one minute. When did all these Barbies make it into the household? Andy's little sister is like two years old. She's not playing with multiple Barbies yet, is she? <laughs> Woo! I don't remember eating that! Cut. Uh, I can't. Now, let's think about this for a second. This is an animated movie about toys coming to life when humans aren't around. But these outtakes tell us they're actually actors pretending to be toys that only come to life when the humans aren't around. Oh, behind the scenes toys are filming this. No, it's humans filming living toy actors, all right. I think my existentialism just threw me a left uppercut. Isn't this exciting, Heimlich? Pixar accidentally puts ants in Toy Story 2. DreamWorks is going to be pissed when they find out. Now we're gonna take some pictures and we're gonna have another little sip of wine and we're gonna take some more pictures. Space, the final frontier. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Andy's back? Hey, everybody! Andy's back! Guess who's back? Mouth presents the March of War. Mirror. Mirror. Uh, football practice. Okay. 
No, no, listen, you gotta give me the time. I did a test run on this thing, it took me 20 minutes. I thought it could maybe push to 18, but you gotta give me at least 15 minutes. Give me the 15 minutes. Bart Simpson, <laughs> the spirited little scamp who twice foiled my evil schemes and sent me to this dank, urine-soaked hellhole. My name is Darth Vader. I am an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. The red zone has always been for loading and unloading. There's never stopping in a white zone. Don't tell me which zone is for stopping and which zone is for loading. <coughs> I think I'm getting the black lung, Bob. It's Christmas time, so what are you gonna do when you're tired of watching the usual holiday movie reruns? Besides watch CinemaSins, of course. I'll be watching some wholesome anime on Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll is an anime streaming service that offers the largest, most diverse collection of anime series that you can watch in HD with no ads. And Crunchyroll gets you new shows as soon as one hour after they air in Japan. With subtitles! It's safe to say that's faster than you could pirate them. Who didn't believe I could do it? Who doubted me? The best part, you can enjoy it all free for 30 days when you go to crunchyroll.com slash cinemasins. Yes, that's a month of unlimited, professionally subtitled anime, manga, and drama titles that you can enjoy on all your devices. All you have to do is click the link in the description or head to crunchyroll.com slash cinemasins to get started.